okay so today we are going to see first potential energy this is what we are going to see so in my first video you can see about potential energy then we'll see uh, in the potential energy we'll see potential energy due to gravity and then potential energy due to spring and after that we'll see conservation of energy right so I'm going to put this uh, I'll try to put this in three videos let's see whether it works for you right so this is what we are going to see in the video right? so to start potential energy I want to go from types of forces right so the forces can be divided into two main components like conservative forces and non-conservative forces okay so hope you remember that um, we did an example that uh, there are three persons and one of them is lifting a, a, an object with mass m uh, through a distance h he he lifted vertically upward the other one used a ramp with some angle right and the third one used a ramp which is more sl uh, the steep is lower than the other one so we found that the work done by all these three persons is same which is mgh so suppose if we do that like a reverse thing like you drop the mass m so actually the gravity is doing the work through a distance h or if you do it in a ramp right which has a vertical uh, distance h so you, you you know that you could show that the work done by the gravity is going to be also mgh so this one shows you um, the the force the gravitational force right so when a work is done by a gravitational force the work done does not depend on the path so it only depends on the initial and final positions right so such forces like when you do a work done by that force and the work done only depends on the initial and final positions then we can call that force as a conservative force so one example for the conservative force is the gravitational force so there are other force we'll learn that the spring force right we'll learn that and there are electromagnetic force you will learn this in your physics 2 if you follow that so the non-conservative force means the work done by a non-conservative force depends on the path so for example think uh, this is a table right and we move an object from here to here in two different paths one the other path is from here then here and then here so we know if you find the work done by the friction then that will more in this path than this one so so we can find that the work done by the friction depends on the path not in the initial and final position so such forces or such uh, forces are called non-conservative force so example for non-conservative force any frictional force like air drag Okay, so 
summary that uh, we learned. So there are two forces, conservative, non-conservative, um, example, so it does not depend on path, the examples are gravitational force, spring force, here example is friction, right? So from here, actually, we are going to move to potential energy. So you will find why I define all these things. Because for every conservative force, there is a potential energy or for every conservative force you can find a function of potential energy right so if there is a conservative force a corresponding potential energy would be there right so now let's see gravitational potential energy right so let's uh, see an example that um, this is the ground level and you have a book at some higher elevation or higher position so the height is will take it as y initial now you drop the book just like a free fall and you neglect air friction right so the only force acts is mg so the book will fall from here to let's take this level right so now the height is let's take y final so it displaced through a distance uh, delta y. So let's find uh, the work done by gravity. So it is the work done is force times delta x. Right. So both are in same direction. So we know we know we don't need the co cosine theta part. So the force acting is downward mg. So negative mg. The displacement is also downward, so negative delta y. So I can rewrite the negative delta y as um, uh, y initial minus y final. So you can see that delta y is y initial minus y final. Right? So I can make some rearrangement like uh, you can multiply y final then um, I need something with delta which is always final minus initial right so what I'm going to do I'm going to take the negative out so I can write m g y final minus mgy initial so this is like something let me call it as potential energy po potential energy final potential energy initial right so this is the gravitational potential energy right so we can now we can define two things one the gravitational potential energy of an object with mass m which is at uh, a height uh, y from the ground can be given by m its mass gravitational acceleration its height from the ground the second thing we found is 
So the gravity is a uh, conservative force. So I can generalize the rule. Work done by a conservative force is negative change in potential energy. Right? Actually, throughout this derivation, we derived these two. This is the one we are going to use in this course. This one will, you will use again in PHY 152 when you derive electric uh, potential energy. Right? So, let's uh, concentrate more in this one. So, when I draw this picture, so the potential energy is actually MGY. Actually, we are taking the potential energy at the ground level is zero. And related to that, this object now has potential energy, which is equal MGY. Right? So let's see um, more about, a uh, little more about the potential energy. So let me see two examples. So the one is, uh, you, this is the ground. This is a table, right? So you have an object here, mass M. So let's take this distance is 2 meters and this one is... Uh, 1.5 meters it's not in scale right so um, okay let's let's see like three objects uh, one is on the table um, same mass so let me write a b one is on the ground right c okay so there are three objects one is at the ground table so now first I'm going to take my uh, at the ground, my potential energy is zero, right? So, what is the potential energy of the object B? That means gravitational potential energy, okay? So, what we have to do, the mass, the gravity, and from the zero potential level, what is its height? Vertically, um, upward height right so it is 3.5 if it is uh, uh, a then m g from here it is 1.5 for c it's at the zero potential level so potential energy is zero now the same situation but uh, I'm going to take uh, my zero potential level as the table so you can you can take any level as your zero potential level right so now the potential energy of b gravitational potential energy so this is two meters this is 1.5 meters so from here m g so from my zero, it is two meters upward, so mg2. Potential energy of A, it is at the zero level. So let's come to potential energy of C, so mg. Okay, now from the zero potential energy level, it is in the negative direction. So I have to put negative 1.5, right? So, um, you can see a, an example in the book. I'll, I'll post that on Blackboard. So, for any case, if you find the change in potential energy between two levels like A and C, you will find they are equal, right? So, here I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stop here, right? Because we need this when we use conservation of energy. So, this video is ending here and my in my next video I'm going to talk about spring potential energy right thank you